Dante Certification Program Level 3. This module covers the encapsulation process. Networks transport data by encapsulating them. The concept of encapsulation can be seen even in the analog world, although the term encapsulation is not used in an analog setting. Observe this scenario. You can see that the sound signals from these instruments get encapsulated into the snake. Now when we think of this in terms of IP networking, instead of transferring the analog signals into a snake, we encapsulate that data onto the network cable. Dante encapsulates up to four channels in a unicast flow. But what if my box has more than four channels? How does Dante handle that? If you recall your previous Dante trainings, you will know that Dante simply creates another flow for the fifth channel. Why does Dante do this? The answer is efficiency. Think of it like this. In an analog multicore cable, each core is used by one channel. But in Dante, four channels will use one flow, which is similar to the one core of a multicore cable. The number of cores available on a device is the number of flows the device supports. Here's a simplified model of what happens in the network. It starts with some data. It could be anything really. Audio samples, a video frame, a word processing document, or whatever. The transport layer is the first stage of encapsulation. It puts the data in a packet. It knows both the source and the destination ports and knows the type of transport protocol that needs to be used. Then comes the network layer, which is the layer 3 of the OSI model. The network layer adds the destination and source IP address, just like you do when sending a letter. It keeps the ports and the protocol information received from the transport layer. This is then passed on to the data link layer. At this layer, the MAC address is added. A MAC address is the physical or hardware address of the IP address. It's possible to have multiple IP addresses sitting on top of the same MAC address. The data link layer adds both source and destination MAC addresses and keeps everything else we've added so far. All this then gets passed on to the physical layer where it's placed on the wire as bits. Here's a good analogy to explain the encapsulation process. Think of the postal service. Note that the IP stacks are abstract. First, I write a letter. That is, I create some data. Then, I place that letter in an envelope and address it. In this case, I am a port address and you are a port address. Then I write my return street address on the envelope. This is my IP address. And then I write your street address on the envelope. This is your IP address. Then I give the envelope to the postal office and they put that in a mail bag. If it's international mail, then it goes in one bag. And if it's local, then it goes into a different bag. This is the source and destination MAC address. The envelope containing the letter is sorted several times through the system, and it's not open. This is just like the source and destination IP addresses in encapsulation that never changes. The mailbag that the envelope is carried in changes several times, just like the MAC address. Now, the mailbag may travel on a train, airplane, boat, and van. This is like the physical layer. When the last mailbag arrives at the destination, the envelope is unpacked. This is similar to a packet being removed from the frame. The envelope is then handed to the recipient by someone at their address and opened. This is like the data being removed from the packet. The idea of the layered model is that you can concentrate on one particular layer if you're a developer and only worry about that data coming to you from above and how you present it to the layer below. So what this means is that you can have a bunch of folks that don't know anything about the physical cabling but they can continue to work on the IP stack further up. This is really an efficient way of improving devices.